Welcome to Life in Biology. I'm Dr. Joel Graff and this is episode number two. Um, today we're going to be talking about laboratory notebooks. Um, laboratory notebooks are super important and it's something that I don't think gets enough attention. Now if, you, if you're currently a scientist or if you're thinking about being a scientist, this story will be relevant to you. On the first day of working in a lab, you probably get led around by a lab manager. You learn where things in the lab are. You learn the names of your coworkers, uh, and then probably forget them. Um, and then you might walk by a stack of laboratory notebooks, and the lab manager will say, "Grab a lab book," and uh, you do that. You grab your book, and and they just say, "Write down your experiments," and that's about all the directions you're going to get. So I want to talk about good lab book practices. So, in a lab book, uh, you write an entry for each experiment that you do. So for each experiment, there's obviously going to be a title for that experiment. And personally, I think that a long title is okay. And what I really want in that title is a couple things. It's keywords. I want to know what method I'm doing. This comes in handy if you do an experiment once and then three, four months later, you want to do that experiment again. Um, being able to go back uh, through your lab book and look specifically for that method in the in the title uh, will help you f find that quickly. Um, you should also mention the samples that you're going to be processing or analyzing in that experiment and and, um, and and by doing that you can quickly compile two, three, four experiments from from different times and in your lab book and compile them together to, to be able to do statistics with your repeated experiments. So be sure you have those important things in your titles. The next part is I think really important and it's purpose. Uh, this is usually in most lab books I've looked through usually it's about a one sentence uh, purpose and it basically people tend to just answer what what is it that they're going to do and it's basically a rehashing of the title uh, just in a sentence form but if you think about the word purpose purpose to really explain the purpose you have to answer the the question of why why are you doing that experiment maybe your experiment is based on a previous uh, observation um, you 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 saw you were doing one experiment you saw something and you want to follow up on that observation or maybe you were doing an experiment and you saw something that uh, during during the experiment design you realized there was a, a mistake so you can refer back to that previous experiment and say I'm gonna do this experiment because of what I saw here or because I think I, this one step in the experiment should be changed so refer back to refer back to previous entries in your lab book uh, in your purpose. Experimental design choice, you know, wh why are you doing the experiment you're doing with the specific experiment type that you're doing versus another experiment type? Is there, you know, this gives you a chance to think about is there a better thing that I could be doing to answer the question? And you should also maybe write down your hypothesis, what you think might happen in this experiment. Um, and that would be your expectation for the experiment. Um, so this should be a, a decent paragraph instead of just one sentence. So then the next part of a lab notebook is writing your procedures. So it's well advised and optimal to write your write in your lab book before you do the experiment but you can get busy sometimes and this doesn't always happen but make sure that you make sure that you write your procedure down and it should be detailed and by detailed I mean if someone else were to just look at your lab book read through your notes they should be able to reproduce the experiment fairly um, fairly well uh, compared to what you did just from your notes they shouldn't have to ask you any questions about what you did uh, sometimes you do experiments over and over and over and so writing a detailed procedure every single time might be unnecessary if you can refer back to a previous lab book entry where you did do a um, where you did do a a, a detailed uh, procedure um, observations so you write up your procedure ahead of time but then as you're doing the experiment 
something might happen. You might spill your sample. You might um, not see a pellet uh, in your after a centrifuge step. Um, things like that. You should you should make note of these, and you should also write down thoughts, troubleshooting. If there's parts of the experiment that don't seem to go well, and you think you should change them next time. Uh, make a note of it there and then you're going to come back to that in your conclusion. So results. Uh, the, the previous episode of Life in Biology we talked about Gregor Mendel and um, his lab notebooks were poorly written. A lot of people had trouble understanding exactly how he set up ex his experiment and then we talked about how uh, his results were almost too perfect. There wasn't the noise you might expect in um, in just natural, uh, uh, random uh, experiments. Uh, and some people think that maybe Gregor Mendel understood what the answer was going to be before the whole eight years was up, and maybe he discarded data from experiments where the um, the, the data didn't quite fit the, the math that he was expecting. Uh, so you should include your raw data. You should have all the data there and if you if there is a sample that you think shouldn't be included in the analysis for some reason, maybe you're doing a, um, an ELISA and you're measuring absorbance in a 96 volt plate and you get a really high reading for one of your samples and you, you go back and you look and you realize that there is an air bubble in your sample uh, that could give you that reading, then it makes sense to, to omit that piece of data uh, rather than trying to make sense of it with uh, bar graphs that have a giant error bar. You should have graphs and charts showing what you think, uh, showing an easy way to interpret the, the raw data. Um, if you have digital data, and this can be a number of different things. Maybe you do microscopy and you have micrographs, you have data set, large data sets, maybe uh, a microarray or something like that, or, or other sorts of large files like maybe from you get from flow cytometry. These sorts of things should be, um, should be kept in a digital format in a secure storage way um, so that you can come back to them data, uh, later, but it wouldn't make sense to print out all of your microarray data points, for example. And then, if you're doing an experiment for multiple times and it's time to do statistics to see if there uh, really was a trend in your, in your data, um, you, you, you pull out the statistics at that point and uh, do the appropriate statistical tests, and we'll talk more about statistics later. And then the final section of your, of your lab notebook is your conclusion. And this should answer all sorts of questions. Did, did your experiment work? Yes or no? Um, is it worth repeating? Uh, sometimes you do an experiment and, uh, and, and after doing it, you, you, you realize, well, that was a silly experiment to do. I shouldn't do, do that again. Um, or this is now, now I realize now that the experiment setup isn't going to answer what I'm trying to answer. Um, do you need to make changes to the procedure? Uh, refer back to your procedure where you were making notes uh, on the different steps. Did you have enough controls in your experiment? Uh, can you in interpret the data appropriately? Do you need to add more conditions? Maybe you did just a pilot experiment and you want to do um, now that you've got all the uh, troubleshooting done, now it's time to do your big experiment. Um, so make notes of these in your conclusions. And then of course your conclusion should have data interpretation. You need to know whether there are bad samples in your, in your, uh, in your experiment and explain why you think that there are bad samples. You want to know whether when you're doing the readings was there a good signal to noise ratio? Is this believable data? Um, and then you should write new ideas. Are there new experiments you thought of? Uh, uh, did, while you were doing the experiment, did you have a thought go through your mind that you want to remember uh, to set up another experiment? Uh, so be sure to, this should, I really think conclusions should be bullet points and it should be a very long section of your lab book and sometimes people